Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about the negative thought pattern of emotional reasoning. Now emotional reasoning doesn't mean that you're emotional. It just means that the way you feel about something, you think that's the way it is. It's unsupported by facts. But if I feel afraid, for example, if I enter a room and I feel afraid, emotional reasoning says, well, you feel afraid because the people in the room are harmful. Now that's unsupported by facts. Of course, it's not true. The people in the room is not harmful. It's just that I feel afraid. Now, when we feel afraid, we want to deal with the feeling of fear as opposed to allowing the feeling to tell us things about ourselves. So I want to talk about emotional reasoning. It's believing what we think must be true. It's emotional reasoning. So for example, I'm going to give another example. Because you grew up poor, emotional reasoning says that you're going to make, you're always going to make bad decisions around money. Of course, that's unsupported by facts. So the fear of being poor will drive your decision making and it will dictate how you work, where you work, how you spend. It will also impact your self-esteem. It impacts your self-worth. This fear will also manifest sometimes in overspending, impulse buying. It would also sometimes uh, influence low moods, you know, because there, then it will trap you in a cycle of spending as soon as you get it to reinforce the, the the view that I'm not good with money because we're doing emotional reasoning. I feel this, therefore it is true. Therefore, we're going to make sure the thing that we think is true stays true, right? And so you're reinforcing a belief system and a pattern of behavior that is that is confirming for yourself that the thing that you think about yourself is true. I hope all of this is making sense, right? Because I really want you to get it so you can stop doing emotional reasoning. I know a lot of people do emotional reasoning around this area and there's a lot of freedom that we're missing out on because we're feeling this way. And so when the low moods come, then we do some impulse spending to soothe that feeling. And it's again, reinforcing it that this is always going to be my life. I, nothing's ever going to change. This is the way it's going to be. Do you hear those absolute statements? Nothing's ever going to change. This is always going to be my life. And that's not true. You know, things will change. Things will change because they do. Because the sun rises and the sun sets and it's another day. Things are always changing. Things will change, you know, always. As long as we're, we're here and we're here on this earth, things will change. So that's some of the ways from emotional reasoning the things that will tell us that, especially if we're thinking about around it about money. And when we think about childhood trauma, scarcity is a massive trauma that goes unaddressed. And we're going to address it at some point in, in a more depth here on, on our channel. But for now, I'm just wanting to talk about it around scarcity and how it manifests itself and the way it looks. Now, what can we use to combat the emotional reasoning around money when we grew up in scarcity and it's telling us things about ourselves? I feel like this, therefore it must be true. Therefore, we are going to create a pattern in our lives that is going to reinforce the truth. If we feel like we're not good with money, as soon as it comes, we're going to find things to do with it. It's going to tell us what to do. We're going to do it. It's reinforcing a view that I'm not and it's keeping us trapped. Therefore, God is not a provider. Therefore, God can't help me. Therefore, the stronghold will always be a part of my life. Do you hear all those lies that it will tell? God is a provider because he said he is and he holds this whole world and everything in it. And he will not hold anything good from those who walk uprightly, including you. He will not hold, withhold anything that is good from you. So therefore, what is happening? Something else is happening. Something else is happening. And I read the book of Nehemiah recently and learned so many things from the book of Nehemiah about faith and finance. So if you stay on this channel and bring your friends to join us, I am going to break that down, perhaps in the month of October, around the things that I learned from Nehemiah and the things that we can apply to our lives. That's going to take us out of a cycle and a pattern that scarcity have put us in and how we can become free as a result. So you want, you want to stay tuned from that. Now, how can we, how can we change this? Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean onto your own understanding. In all, in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So when we learn how to listen to him, when we learn how to hear his voice, when we learn to know that, when we have childlike trust, that I'm going to go to you to say, 
This is what I have. How do I do it? These are the patterns that I've noticed in my life. Help me to get rid of them. Take this stronghold. I'm going to trust you to deal with it. The stronghold for me. Show me. Help me to hear you. What you say to me and help me to follow that path. I can tell you that it will lead you out of places that you didn't know that you were in, you know, just by listening and hearing. But for me, I believe that part of that is honesty, is honestly saying, this is where I am. Acknowledge the emotional reasoning around the areas where it's present and allow God to lead you out. When we are learning to trust God, it's a daily process and it's a daily journey. When we're learning to trust him in an area where we couldn't trust our parents, when we're learning to trust him in an area where our parents let us down in, when we're learning how to trust him in areas where caregivers were not consistent, and we're learning how to trust him in areas where people have always habitually let us down. That can be a challenge and that's okay. And I believe that he knows that it's a challenge too, that I'm struggling to trust you in an area where I've never been able to rely on anyone. He knows that. He understands that. If there are people that was in your life that you could rely on and you that could you could trust, then I want you to think about those people. How did they show up for you? How did they make sure that you were okay? What are the simple and, and big ways that they showed up for you? Hold on to that because it's going to help you to trust God. Sometimes I know that if our caregivers, those primary people in our lives, did not provide the level of security where we could trust, it's very difficult to hold on to trust from anybody else. But even if the caregivers didn't do it, I want you to think of who else in my life I could trust. Where Was it a teacher? Was it a friend? Was it another sibling? Was it the neighbor? Was it somebody at church? Who provided that for me? Was there anybody? And if you have nobody who provided that. Look at how other people do it in their lives, you know? And we can draw examples from that of I'm learning how to trust God and I don't have a template for myself. I don't have a working model of trust for myself in caregiving relationships, but I'm going to look at how I see my neighbor does it, how I see my friends do it. You know, do some interviews and talk to people and say, how did you learn to trust? Uh, tell me what that was like for you because I don't have a template for myself. And even if you don't want to share that you don't have a template for yourself, ask people, well, how did it do it? What did it look like for you as you're learning and growing into trusting? And God is going to be able to, he's going to help you. He's going to provide and put people in your life that is going to help you with this area as you're learning how to tackle one negative thought pattern at a time. Throughout this week, I've shared several negative thought patterns. I've shared how they've impacted our lives. If you, if this is the first video that you're watching of negative thought patterns, as we talk about emotional reasoning, then go back and look throughout this week where we talked about, where I talked about several types of negative thought patterns and how they are impacting our lives. And I share scriptures that are that is able, that we can hold on to something solid that we can hold on to that is going to lead us and help us to unpack, undo, and those and, and for God to take away those strongholds and set us free. Now, we might want to desire freedom. We might want to get rid of negative thought patterns, and we didn't know. You may not have known how to do it before, but I pray that as you watch these videos, that it will, that it will be able to help you to start to do in the work of unpacking, to release in and let go of negative thought patterns so that you can have the abundant life that God desires that you have.